first thing that you need to understand is that the a punch is a combination is not just a hand or the arm is a combination of all the connections in your body from the tip of your hand all the way to the foot on the floor the chinese call it uh, threading the pearls right if you think of every um articulation every every bending every articulation of your body every point that you can bend in your body as a pro and you have to think of of how you connect all those those different parts of your body all those different pros in the same sequence so if you're here right in a punch like a jab here right jab that goes from here you're connecting this to 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 that to the ankle and to the heel if you're doing it right when you Punching is actually should feel like a kick. It's coming from the floor, Boom. right? That's one of the parts. Is aligning all the, the articulations of, of the body so you can connect the floor all the way to 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 the tip of the, the punch. The other part of every um, strike is the way you relax until you don't. Every Martial arts in the world has a variation of that. It's like, yeah, speed comes from sudden acceleration that comes from relaxation. So you jabbing, it goes very fast from here, right? Pa, pa, the cross comes from here. This is very relaxed. But at the very end, what a lot of different styles have variations of it, is that you find a way to tense up to create enough structure. Boom! That will establish the end of the power. And more than the end of the power, it allows a less bit of acceleration. In karate, they, they do a great job on, on isolating it by getting to punch from a horse stance that gets this very uh, sharp. So it's your punch go relax, 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 and then the very few inches, you, you rotate it and hit, right? Go like this. If you go exaggerated, you go here and boom, here, boom, boom, right? And that's that's how you add to that last inch of power is the corkscrew. Boxing does the same thing. They, or Muay Thai, they keep, they keep the, the, their hands here and then the last minute they flick. They go slow and Rotate. If you look at Wing Chun, for example, the Wing Chun Kung Fu that is what Bruce Lee learned, they use a different structure. They they thread the pearls instead of with a corkscrew. They do with the with expanding this angle and this angle and all the way to 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 the foot. So it goes is a short punch that goes like here, right? And when you do that, that less snap that creates that this extra distance is the less inch of impact that you can you, you're using in your punch and by doing that you see there's different ways of connecting the body to the floor and there are different ways of hitting of course that also impacts the next part is that having the, the to have the higher pressure that you can you have to have the smallest contact point. So if you see some specialists, a lot of boxers, for example, you know, a lot of my boxer instructors in my, in my life told me that when you're punching, you have to hit and you rotate that less inch and you stretch your body. So you almost kind of hit with those two knuckles, right? If you're doing Wing Chun, for example, that is, has these kind of mechanic, these kind of snap, the, the knuckles that you tend to hit are the bottom two because they, they are the ones that can take more benefit from, the, 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 from that less snap. So I talked about the, the shoulder moving back, like the, the hand, in the other video, I talked about the hand connecting 
and, and linking back and pulling in the pull, push, power is a very important sequ sequence and combination in every martial arts. The next part is how you connect your, your torso, specifically your hips. In every style, there's some kind of variation of how you rotate. Like Wing Chun, they do, they do training, they do this. Because they want to, to train you to learn to move your entire body, especially your torso in your hips. In boxing, they go from here to here. It's like rotating, snapping your, your, your hips to the side. So you can you can connect it. Even if you're you can low down and come with uppercuts, but also coming always coming from here, from ro ro rotating your hips and a little bit of your feet. Finally, the last part of the less critical connection that you need is a connection with the floor. If you connect with the ground well, you can have power. That's when when. A lot of people say so the Japanese say that you you don't punch you kick with the hands right so if you're if you're punching right you're it's coming from the from the foot especially the foot again kind of the other the, the opposite side that's coming from the foot on, on, the, on the back so when when you see a boxer throwing a, a direct they punch and they rotate the, their uh, hips and although the foot here is rotating, it's still putting pressure on the floor against that. When you do, when you see karate people punching, you see like people like Machida on, on, on UFC, he does more karate punch that he goes like, he charges forward. It, it's less flexible, less mobile, but he's a, a big finisher if you go push forward. That creates an even bigger sense of kicking with your your hand. But you know, again, every style is going to have a very different variation of it. The most important thing is that you have to connect uh, the foot and the floor to the, the, your knuckles. There is a, a very interesting drill or exercise that I learned and I got it from both my boxing instructor and my Kung Fu instructor and my karate instructor, they all gave me the same uh, exact drill. That is this. You get on the, let's say that you're gonna do a jab, for example. You take whatever is the strike or the punch you wanna do. You do like take the jab, you get in the position, you adjust your form and you put pressure. Let's say that, you come come the camera to the side, I say that you're you're taking the the the, the jack here. So keep your your hand protecting your face. You open it like you're just going to the last inch of power that you can. You feel that your foot here is connected to that the hand. So you, you push this foot, this heel against the floor that way, right? It's in diagonal back. So that power goes all the way there, and you open your chest, right? From here, you take your foot, oh, it's like one inch away is fine. And stay there and keep that pressure. Open your chest. Open, 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 open. Stay there if you want. You can elevate this leg even more, but all you need is like to take that off the ground so you don't have any uh, support from it. And then put it back and relax. Now you're gonna do the cross. Same thing, you do it here. You adjust, adjust, all right, I have, the, the right position here. I can feel that my hips are turned well. I can feel my foot there, right? And I'm going to take my front foot off the ground and I can push from here, push from the floor. I can have to feel it hitting that front. The karate guys do the same thing. They do a punch here. They get on their, their stands, their Four stands, they raise their foot. They do the other side. They raise their foot and they stay there and connect and push. If you do that enough and stop as, as you're doing that, you relax, 
stop. Some people like to close their eyes. I like to do it sometimes. I just kind of close my eyes and stay there and meditate and pay attention to your body and say, all right, what can I do to increase the pressure in that point? And it's always a combination of opening, opening the chest, moving the, the back hand further back and aligning everything else with it and pushing from the floor. Of course, you have to make sure that you're not doing this to increase the power because that's when you when you get kicked in the face. You have to do this by maintaining your um, your body up. So having a mirror next to you kind of helps you to, to do this. Like it's here and here. That's a, a wonderful warm up and an exercise you can you can use to develop self awareness and and, the, and understand the feeling of the right punch in your body. You do all of those things and you protect from uh, moving your hand before you give it any tail before you move. So you're gonna jab, you're gonna jab. From here, nothing's gonna happen until you go and then back as the other one is coming. The other one is going. One goes, doesn't come back. That's a good, a good way to develop a simple power on your strike that doesn't get like, oh. Because if you establish that pattern, you're going to be, no, doesn't matter how fast you are, the other person is always gonna have half a second ahead of you and that is gonna make you feel very small. All right, hope it works.